buff, stout, cut engineers that we are to speak that gibberish Mordor. Remember, remember when they spoke? Yeah. <laughs> the, well, it's like it takes so much energy for them to speak because they're they're so beyond, right? They've evolved yeah, right, beyond exactly. that. It takes a hundred years off their life. Every time they <laughs> to, talk. Like, for me to come mortal. down into language, it like yeah. takes a hundred years off of my life. That's how hard it is for me to condescend to speak to you because you're so unevolved, dude. <laughs> Exactly. That's why you guys got to send those big super chats, and we will. Uh, we'll, we're we're going to lose minutes off of our life uh, to, to to condescend to the, uh, the, <laughs> it the lower me, level. It reminds me of that Jordan Peterson quote. Did, did you ever hear him say, "I have thoughts so deep that they don't make words for them"? <laughs> it's like he's one of the engineers, dude. <laughs> Mind blown, dude. My thoughts are so deep. Okay, so now we come to Alien Covenant, and I'm glad you mentioned Genesis because. Now we're getting to more overtly biblical themes, right? So this is the covenant of Adam and Eve in Genesis, God's covenant with Adam, the Genesis mm -hmm. covenant. But now it's retold as another cycle in the Luciferian revolutionary ethos of this narrative, this this universe, which is that a breakaway civilization is now going to have to set up a new earth colony. It's almost like the ship is Noah's Ark in space and they've got all the little eggs they're, they're growing humans in, in test tubes and they're going to set up a new experimental human colony on some random place they found. But it turns out they're being directed there by the original psycho David from Prometheus who is leading them there. Right. And they're, when did, they it, get, did it explicitly say that or was it like kind of like maybe no, no, he's, he was? He, well, it's it's uh, he's allowed elizabeth shaw or what they think is elizabeth shaw's character to send the song as a signal it's that stupid john denver song yeah what the heck? like dude john denver in space john denver in space beckons the ship which is driven by uh uh it, it being driven by uh kenny powers kenny powers, kenny, versus, powers <laughs> kenny powers in space right kenny powers drives the ship listening to john denver to go find paradise I mean, come on, it's genius. It's genius. It's <laughs> right, so, but it was, the, it was the David character who was letting the signal shout uh, go to bring them to the planet because he needs more humans and human eggs to experiment on. Yeah, more human test, uh, test subjects to, to do his experiments because, of course, he's gotten the black goo. Right, I mean, he's he's taken the reins of evolution, the the, the evolutionary mutation force of, of random mutation, kind of driven by some sort of process that was maybe engineered by the the Gnostic architects, the Archons, and mm -hmm. and he's figured that out, killed his creators with it, and uh, now is uh, presumably wanting to enact more genocides. Right, like this is his he's a genocidal maniac now. Basically. Yeah, he wants to create and perfect and be, he wants to be God, basically. And he wants to decide who lives and who dies. He likes to experiment to try to mutate these creatures that he's creating on this planet to try to get them into like, you know, higher phases of evolution or whatever. And so mm -hmm. he, he he just says, uh, well, idle hands, the devil's play thing. And I didn't have anything else to do. And, you know, uh, I just played around. <laughs> so um, now he wants to do this with these unfortunate people who show up there as one of the colonies. And um, basically the whole story is just that, that, that it's a, it's another instantiation of but now it's AI versus Xenomorph versus human, right? Kind of like, yeah. you know, in 2001, it's man versus computer. And then they have to meld together, uh, you know, as a new entity. And so now it's, yeah. it's so it's a universe where there's no purpose and it, literally things just mutate into anything. Right. I mean, that's the yeah. nonsense of the Darwinian atheist worldview is that you never know. You just, might get hey, it. You might get dude, a face like, tomorrow, bro, we can, we can devolve back into apes tomorrow, dude. Anything. Exactly. exactly. You might you might get a, a 10, like a, a, a 10 donged octopus. Dude, I just or, grew a wing, bro. I, I grew one wing overnight. <laughs> you, got, you, got coochie, you got coochies with teeth in them biting people like you never know what you're going to get. Wait a minute. But it always, it always you, all, you know it's going to be either phallic or vaginal. That's what you do know. Oh, exactly <laughs> be, right. Because everything it's always has... going to be strangely sexual, yet doesn't reproduce sexually, but hijacks the sexual function 
in order to destroy the organism, destroy the world. Well, remember, it. we're told in one of the earlier verses of screenplay, the engineers had evolved to be genderless and perhaps were seeking to evolve to immateriality. So the evolutionary ascent of the engineers was to achieve immateriality. Like Baphomet. Like, like, uh, Which is 100% Gnostic, right? <clears throat> yeah. Like the Baphomet. So they do their worship Baphomet. They have the, the Baphomet uh, creature, which is, of course, when you look at like Giger's work, it's all alien Baphomets with you know, weird phallic, right. like violent looking phalluses. I mean, it's just, it's really, it's disgusting, completely satanic imagery, like, you know, violence and sex melded together, which of course, yeah, I guess that's Hollywood in a, nut in a nutshell. Um, sex is violent and violence is, is, is sexy. Um, so pe people actually believe that these are beautiful. Like they say that like Geiger's work is just so so beautiful, it's such a beautiful aesthetic. It's it's completely <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you like Hell World, right? Like what, okay. what kind of a beautiful aesthetic is that, right? It's like oh, I like how the gun goes in the mouth and then out the butt of the woman, and she's like, you know, it's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love yeah, all so the dead babies in his art, dude. It's beautiful. <laughs> how about the ship? The ship's name is Mother. They, they talk to it, Mother. Mother, the mother. Well, AI thing. is usually presented as a feminine goddess, Pistis Sophia mother character. It's always presented that way. Right. In uh, people, Resident people. Evil, right? It's mother, the Red Queen. Yeah. 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 It's like the peak of algorithmic wisdom, right? Wisdom just being. Is a woman, dude, not a man, yeah. bigot. But it's also an algorithm. It's also a robotic algorithm, but it's feminine, okay? It's a feminine, the right. divine feminine. The feminine. Well, yeah, actually, the, the the feminine as superior theme was all throughout the series of Alien. In fact, the Ripley character, right, I've noted in my analyses and essays, like uh, every installment, Ripley's hair gets shorter and shorter to where it's just bald. And she's basically on a prison planet with a bunch of dudes and she's superior. Right. And she she's reached becomes, that androgynous yeah. state. Uh, the she engineers. becomes the next phase of evolution because she gives birth to. She basically becomes a, a kind of inverted inversion of the Theotoko. She gives birth to the new stage in evolution, which is a xenomorph that pops out of her. So demonic. Well, you know, it's funny because they, 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 they actually conflict. The story ends up conflicting with itself and kind of refuting itself in so many different ways. Like on one hand, the they only show male and they're like non, they're, they're hyper masculine. Uh, you know, just such exaggerated masculine forms on the uh, what's called the engineers, but then they say in the script that they've like they've evolved beyond sexuality, but they you know they don't you don't have any. I guess maybe they just don't reproduce sexually. You know, maybe they use their technology to reproduce, which is a part of the mythos of progress that we see now, which is where the elite are trying to take it as quickly as they can, right? With you know getting getting a population that would be completely controlled and bred by the state by the mm -hmm. elite by you know the david character which yeah. you know david kind of does represent the elite in many ways right exactly. he, he's created by david is this he's AI the real prometheus algorithm. i think yeah yes exactly he is the 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 christ figure the inverted christ figure in this who is actually you know satanic it's promethean and deicidal exactly. and um but he is robotic he's emotionless Yet he starts to take on certain human characteristics like wrath, jealousy, like envy. I mean, he does show envy in the film here as well when he comes in contact with the new version of David, which is named Walter, um, which supposedly is superior to him. Right. But ends up, we don't, you know, we, are, we haven't gotten to the end yet, but um, I don't know. I forget what happens in the middle of the movie. <laughs> like, I don't know, how do they even get to the end? There's a lot of gobbledygook in this one. A lot of stupid ship stuff where it's like, oh, we're like, uh, three parsecs to the left. <laughs> uh, let me think. So basically, um, oh, one important part in the middle of this movie is that we learned that the the black goo had been turned into something when you when you open it up and expose it to the atmosphere. It turns into basically a C-H-E-M trail, which they spray over, over the whole planet, which infects all the living life forms on the sun. In other words, it's a bioweapon that they sprayed into the air. Aerosolized, yeah. It was aerosolized, and it becomes a nanoparticulate spore that gets into individuals and rewrites their RNA. Well, that sounds like something I've heard of recently. Maybe I don't, can I place? I don't know. Maybe you guys can help me. Where have we heard of 
something in the last few years supposedly doing this kind of stuff. Well, uh, of course, you know, we can't really go into that on this stream. However, if you go over to my R-O-K-F-I-N, I did a lengthy, lengthy analysis. I'm sure Tristan as well on his channel. He's done many analyses. Here it is right here. You can find a, uh, a, 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 a more detailed, in-depth approach of what I think is going on with all of that stuff. But I just thought that was really weird that, you know, I kind of delved, did a deep dive on all that maybe a month ago. And then I'm watching this movie and I'm like, that sounds like what, what it sounds like the black goo, dude. Well, yeah, not only that, but it's like this, the planet that they go to was supposedly paradise, right? This is, isn't it, it paradise? Well, it's it's not, but they think it is. Yeah. Oh, they think they're going to paradise, right. but it's not quite paradise. I guess right. in the next film, if they ever get the right. other one, the other one made, they'll go to paradise. Well, do you remember that line too, where David says something like, uh, the bioweapon, it infected everything made of meat. <laughs> right. So meat is toxic. Meat is bad. Meat is yeah. so meat is part of the toxin that has to be gotten rid of. And you're absolutely right that what David comes to decide is that humanity is the problem. So he wants to stamp out humanity. Or he wants and to And David does represent experiment. Right. And and David being like a, a robot, being AI, he represents that you know, this uh, transcendent thing, which, you know, they're, they're, you're going to upload your consciousness into the cloud. If you just follow the science, eventually we're going to let you live forever. He does represent that promise, that uh, that kind of uh, Luciferian promise of you're going to live forever, you're going to be as gods, that transhumanism is constantly giving us. He is the ascended man who is unaffected by the... The, the virus of the black goo. He's unaffected by the the spread of death. Well, the, the irony, universe. yeah, is that they they specify that somehow the black goo was the attempt of the engineers to locate the gene responsible for violence to isolate it, and then for some reason they created a bunch of black goo out of that. Right. But then that becomes the bioweapon, and so David has a, the opposite view. He's like. He's always saying, aren't they beautiful? Aren't they marvelous, right? <laughs> the, yeah, about yeah, the xenomorphs, right. how awesome they are as killers. And so he represents uh, not the, the engineer mindset, but the AI mindset that there's nothing mm. wrong with violence. In fact, violence is a beautiful thing. It's, it's what he, he, again, represents that dark uh, instantiation of the dark side. Yeah, yeah. Death, death being the great liberator, right? Death is going to liberate you from, you know, the death of the flesh and the birth of the new man, the yes, birth of the ascended exactly. the new man through, through, nos, through Gnosis. Through, through um, AI or gay eye. Yeah. <laughs> because if you remember, he uh, has that uh, narcissistic homoerotic sequence with his other copy AI. So David Ooh. and Walter, right? Remember that? They kiss? they kiss or something? Well, David tries to make a move and Walter's like, whoa, dude. And then he tricks him and he like pulls his battery out of his neck. Is that, is that at the very end when they have their... Uh, it's it's towards something. the end of Covenant, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, he teaches him how to play the piccolo. Goes so we go from in. fake and gray to gay eye. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, gay really. eye. Mm -hmm. and, and again he, he he's an amalgamation of all the knowledge of man right david has all the all the knowledge of man all the he knows all the ancient languages and he can translate the ancient and that's languages. why he has to kill walter because walter's actually an improvement on him yeah which he hates and he's jealous of mm -hmm, exactly which by the way why i thought wouldn't we have eliminated jealousy like why are we making robots with with jealousy so <laughs> if, if we're supposed well, to? Be. It, I don't, maybe he didn't he didn't do this. It's just he learned it, right? He learned oh, it from right. the demons. Dude, dude, what if a robot got horny, dude? dude? Like what if it just happened? Like he just did it, <laughs> and he somehow learned to get like horny and like you know horny and gay. <laughs> he does. Dude. That's the the weird part. Is like so he's just stuck on a planet alone, and he evolves to suddenly be homo erotic. Sexual. It doesn't make any sense because right. he's just right. a robot. Sexual, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's very strange. Why and and if it's not programmed into this robot who doesn't have DNA, how is he? You know, how is he getting? If he's not programmed as a robot and made as a robot, 
as a limited being created as a robot, everybody who knows how computer programming works, like these are not just autonomous processes, right? These are, you know, he's, he's ones and zeros. How does he, does, how does he come to have like lust and power, yeah, right. power hungry <laughs> and jealous and all this stuff, unless he was programmed. So it's like, I don't know. I get the, that's what I'm saying. Like the actual, the fanfare, like the YouTube fanfare of these movies are kind of better than the movies because they're always trying to figure out how to like explain the stupid holes in the plot yeah, right. and they'll come up with like these elaborate things. And it's like, Oh, it almost makes sense, but it's also retarded, but you know, it makes more sense than Ridley Scott's retarded movies. Well, and, it, and he even says something like, I'd rather serve in, and wouldn't you rather reign in hell than serve in heaven? And there's all these kind of, you know, satanic Built Luciferian it, right? themes. And then at the end, when we find out that it wasn't shocker, it was, this was so obvious, right? It wasn't uh, da uh, Walter that got back on the ship. It was David acting like pretending to be Walter. So he gets on the ship. He basically kills everybody, the last woman, and takes over the ship. And then he's got his, uh, you know, human eggs. And then he pulls out of his mouth that he has swallowed two of the xenomorph eggs, right? So he now becomes the the new architect, the new uh, uh, engineer who's going to experiment with his tray of human eggs and his two xenomorph eggs that he snuck onto the ship. And so yeah. he quotes uh, Wagner, this is the entry of the gods into Valhalla. So yeah, now we goes, have again another goes back to the beginning of the seeding of, of right a new race of beings through the new go emergent god coming out of the universe, the AI. Yeah, yeah. Which again, he was taught that he was taught to play that on the piano uh, in the beginning of the film. So maybe Wayland or whatever his name was programmed him to do all this. I mean, you just they, they leave they leave so many things open for interpretation, and I feel like. It's the kind of movie where it's like the guys. Well, they want right. the internet nerds to, to like, dude. Oh, we can figure it out. Then we'll watch all yeah. the videos. I'll watch all deleted scenes, all the documentaries. I'll make them. They want the Spurgs spending all their time decoding this, and yeah. then meanwhile, uh, Damon Lindelof and the people that wrote Lost, they're just basically making this up as they go. Right? right? They're probably watching just like, the nerd yeah. <laughs> fan fiction and be like, "Oh, that guy's gonna take his idea." <laughs> Exactly. That's that's how I guarantee that's how they're going to write the next one. That's what they're doing, and they leave it open. They let the nerds uh, create the fanfare and uh, and muse about it. And I, I think that's kind of how most of these Gnostic sects work as well. They basically they've got this basic framework of yep. the satanic inverted theology, right? And the the neophytes are constantly coming up with weird theories, and they just feed different bullshit at each level of initiation. <laughs> and that's how Freemasonry works, right. right? Like you just feed different nonsense at every single level of these orders, and uh, and that's how you have. Uh, Western esotericism, which is, of course, exactly. just like exactly. David, fake and gay. Ten bucks. If you could give me a little insight on how you notate when you're reading, I would appreciate. I struggle with being organized. A lot of people ask me this question as if they think that I have an organized style of doing this. I don't. If there's no organization to it. I underline just to help me remember. And then I just write notes about what is important on that page on the sticky notes that's it. There's no color codes. There's none of that. There's no ciphers. It's just that. Well, Jay, if you were a superior being, you would have your own <laughs> AI robot that you would train to do this. You must train Jamie in I order to... I am a superior being, and it hurts my mind. It's like I'm losing 100 years every time I speak to you, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> How do you respond to vegans? Uh-oh, here we go. This one's for Tristana who say that veganism is the natural state of man since meat eating didn't really exist in the ancient world until after the fall and that our uh, monks in the church eat a vegan diet. First point is they do not eat a vegan diet and a vegan diet is not a health-based diet. Veganism is a parallel separate ethical system that includes all animal products. It's not just what you eat. It's you don't have flip flops with leather on it like I do. Tristan, why are we uh, not going to listen to the vegans about a natural primal state of Eden or something? Yeah, we just the best way to, to handle that is just call them a name and then end the conversation. Just no, make a fart noise in their face. And then leave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> speak to them in the Proto Indo European engineer speak, like I did. That's the best way.
exactly. And I mean, you know, they're making all sorts of false assumptions. Like, you know, the, the vegan theology is basically that like man fell because he ate meat. Is <laughs> kind of their their idea. Uh, again, like even like in Athos, they eat tons of seafood. They wouldn't be able to do the intense 40 day fast with no meat, no animal foods. It's not no animal foods. It's uh, they're, they're having shrimp. They're having, they eat a lot of shrimp and a lot of, uh, I mean, you could eat technically you could eat lobster every day and still be within the fasting rules. Right. So it's not, it's not about specifically the foods you can even read like uh, St. John of Damascus against heresies um is it against heresies or against the heretics i think it's against it's, heresies. it's on heresies where he lists all the different heretical sects and three or four of yeah. which actually have vegan vegan principles which are condemned as a uh, heresy exactly the condemning of eating meat is condemned as heretical right so um yeah no it's 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 ridiculous it's nonsense they cherry pick scripture they misinterpret scripture they misinterpret anthropology yep. none of them are coming from an orthodox perspective anyways they're just trying to weaponize a you know their own false assumed knowledge of orthodoxy in order to try to prove their point that thou shalt be vegan and if you go vegan then you will join them in starving yourself and being miserable and sterile and they'll yeah, like it's that it's a nutrient deficient diet this is 